a song of ice and fire, the Lion of Night, when death entered the world. The Lion of Night is worshipped in several places around the world of ice and fire. In a shy where nothing is forbidden, he is worshipped by some practitioners of dark magic. In Bravos, his statue is commonly visited by the wealthy. The faceless men believe the Lion of Night to be a manifestation of the many-faced god, Death. Him of many faces, and of many names, the kindly man had said. In Kohor, he is the Black Goat. In Yiti, the Lion of Night. In Westeros, the Stranger. The Maiden of Light could be thought of as the opposite of the Lion of Night. While he is death, or darkness, she is life and light. According to the oldest legends, at the dawn of time, the Lion of Night and the Maiden of Light produced a child, a god on earth, who ruled over the mortal realm for 10,000 years before ascending into the heavens. His descendants ruled over the Empire of the Dawn until one of them, the Bloodstone Emperor, killed his own sister, the Amethyst Empress, usurping her throne. In response to this, the Maiden of Light turned her back upon the mortal world, and the Lion of Night unleashed his darkness unto the realm. His demons came forth and inhabited the world of men. This is the Ashai telling of the story of the Long Night. It aligns with the idea that the faceless men have about the Lion of Night being a manifestation of the many-faced god, Death entered the world. If you're like me, then this might have reminded you of another story, but only mixed around a bit. In the book of Genesis, Adam and Eve are given a paradise, but because Eve is manipulated by the serpent, they both eat from the tree of forbidden knowledge. It is at this moment that sin and death enter the world, and nothing is ever the same again. The Bloodstone Emperor communed with a black stone that fell from the sky. He likely received knowledge that he shouldn't have received, and was convinced that he should kill his sister and take her place as Emperor. Because of his decision to defy the laws set in place by the Emperor of the Dawn, the Maiden of Light is distressed. She allows death to enter the world. It is mentioned in the World of Ice and Fire that after this time, the world remained a broken place, and nothing was ever the same again. The stories might not be exactly the same, but they are analogous. Because of sin, God, or in the case of A Song of Ice and Fire, the gods, punished men by allowing death to enter the world. In the annals of the further east, it was the blood betrayal as his usurpation is named that ushered in the age of darkness called the Long Night. Despairing of the evil that had been unleashed on earth, the Maiden of Light turned her back upon the world, and the Lion of Night came forth in all his wrath to punish the wickedness of men. When we look at what the Lion of Night and the Maiden of Light represent, it's hard not to compare them to the dualistic forces of Melisandre's fire religion. Relor is the god of fire and light. The Great Other is the god of death and darkness. In Melisandre's religion, Relor is thought to be male. The more ancient interpretation of light and darkness has a more interesting implication. Whilst Relor and the Great Other are eternally at odds, the Lion of Night and the Maiden of Light were at some point lovers and produced a child. Two opposite things join together and create balance. This all ties back into the wider theme of A Song of Ice and Fire, which is balance. It is a song because there is a harmony. The forces of nature working in tangent, in perfect cooperation. The Lion of Night and the Maiden of Light are yet another conceptualization of the ice and fire archetype which is found throughout this book series. Usually the fire archetype is essentially anything that represents goodness, birth, and knowledge. Ice is anything that represents darkness and death. This is mostly true in Martin's series. Daenerys, the fire-born princess, is literally called mother by thousands. You could argue that wildfire is associated with death, but wildfire is unnatural. It is man-made. You could also say that dragons themselves are instruments of death. But they are only this when abused by men. In their natural state, dragons exist as any other animal does, living in unison with nature. It was not until the rise of the Valyrian Empire that they became the greatest tool of desolation that the world had ever seen. 
The ice beings known as the Others are synonymous with death, however. They hate all things that live. Martin associates death with winter and cold often in this series. When Jon Snow is betrayed and dies, the last thing that he feels is the cold. He never felt the fourth knife, only the cold. In Catelyn Stark's final moments as she dies, Martin writes, Then the steel was at her throat, and its bite was bitter cold. In the North, winter is associated with death in a very real sense. Failing to properly prepare would mean that one would die during a hard winter. There are several other examples of cold being associated with death in the series. The Hermetic Axiom might also be in play here. As above, so below. As the Lion of Night and the Maiden of Light have joined together to create balance, the earthly forces might have to do the same. Perhaps a great battle for the dawn isn't the solution after all. Perhaps the opposite is necessary.